Hello again, welcome back to the Parsonage. It's Pastor Don from First UMC of Brazoria with another stay at home daily devotional. Friends, we use the term quality time a lot. We all seem to like spending quality time doing whatever it is that we like to do of quality. Well, I'm thinking about time today as we all sit at home and wonder and worry and think about the outcome of this present pandemic. To some people, this is a time of quality time. For others, it isn't. The other day I saw a funny Facebook post. It featured two would-be letters to the editor about people being at home due to the COVID. One was ostensibly written by a dog, the other by a cat. The dog loved having people at home all the time, quality time in spades. The cat, on the other hand, was adamant that people need to get out of his space and go back to work. Seems one dog's quality time is, well, a cat's worst nightmare, and well, so it goes. <clears throat> As you probably know, the New Testament was written in Greek, and there are at least, believe it or not, four words in Greek for love, and well, for our discussion today, there are two for time. Kairos and Kronos. Kronos, which means the amount of time. Kairos refers explicitly to the quality of time. There are two distinctive ways of considering time simultaneously. Albert Einstein spoke about this. He said five minutes can be a very different time frame in two distinct situations. <clears throat> One in which you have your hand on, on a hot stove and another where you spend that same time in a romantic embrace with your, some, with your significant other. The Kronos would be identical, five minutes, 300 seconds, but the Kairos would be different. He said time would fly, I think he's right, in scenario two and painfully drag in the other. That's the difference between Kronos in Kairos. There's a reason that a, a powerful prison ministry program is called Kairos. Many of the men and women served by Kairos, including men at the nearby Clemens unit, are going to be incarcerated for many years for their past crimes. From a Kronos perspective, things can seem quite hopeless. Years or the rest of a life wasted. However, through the sharing of God's love, lives can be changed and the kairos, the quality of those seemingly hopeless years, transformed. Remember in St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, he reminds us that, that God can still make a powerful difference in lives. He, he bragged to the Philippian church about his imprisonment, saying, quote, I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me, his imprisonment, has actually helped to spread the gospel. You see, St. Paul embraced the kairos of his incarceration, even if he could do little on his own to escape the chronos. Likewise, Kairos does the same in our present day prisons, and it works. Consider another man, an innocent one this time, incarcerated by blindness and poverty. His name was Bartimaeus. Jesus and his disciples are traveling to Jericho where they and when they encounter Bartimaeus. The blind beggar was, quote, sitting on the roadside meaning the gutter, where rain and, and waste gathered when he heard Jesus and his entourage passing by. He shouts loudly, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus' entourage tells this miscreant to shut up. Don't, don't bother the Lord. You know, he's busy, you know, ministering to Jericho. He has no time for you and, well, folks like you. Well, this sort of response seems cruel, heartless, mean, you name it. Ignoring the pleas of the needy, why we'd never, right? But back then, blindness was seen as the result of a moral failure, so a blind man would have been considered a serious sinner, a person to have avoided. 
even today, friends, we say things like, if you lie down with dogs, you will don't be surprised if you wake up with fleas, right? Furthermore, Bartimaeus was a beggar, a loathsome, pitiful way of making a living in Jesus' day, long before there was any sort of a social safety net. He wore rags and would have been dirty and smelly, and well, Jesus' handlers rebuffed him. But Jesus would not be handled. He stopped and I think he scolded, perhaps only with his eyes, his disciples and ordered them. Notice, he made them, the scriptures, call him here. And he came to our Lord and Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? And well, Bartimaeus simply asked to see again. Jesus replied, Go, your faith has made you well. And well, then immediately healed, Mark tells us that Bartimaeus followed Jesus on the way. And the Greek word for way, hodos, was very important to St. Mark in his gospel. You see, it was the true path of disciple, and a disciple is, was, literally, one who followed. So Mark is telling us that this blind beggar was, in fact, more of a true disciple than all of Jesus's so-called or would-be handlers. Much like the widow's pittance offering meant more than all the rich folks' coin, Bartimaeus and, and the widow were the definition of disciples. But on the other hand, Jesus was undoubtedly busy. Who could blame him for electing to be a, an efficient user of his chronos and passing Bartimaeus by? But Jesus is and always is focused on the kairos of, of that moment, of every moment. And thankfully, Jesus is never too busy to answer pleas. But we're to do likewise. And well, all too often, we're just that, too busy. We focus on the chronometers in our lives to the detriment and exclusion of the kairosometer in our hearts. I'll call her Lisa. She was a hard-working mother of beautiful young daughters and, well, one of the so-called working poor. And one afternoon, she came to the food pantry at my church she stood patiently in the long line waiting for her turn for assistance. Then she saw, I'll call her Susan, at the sign-in desk. And, well, she knew Susan from the Girl Scout troop where their girls were in. Lisa panicked. I'm going to have to face someone I know and admit I'm too poor to feed my family. How cruel and humiliating. And, the chronos ticked by as she debated with herself whether or not to leave. And then Lisa, then, then I'm sorry, Susan saw Lisa and came right up and gave her a big hug and welcomed her to the pantry, helping her fill out the enrollment card and get needed food. The loving kindness displayed by Susan didn't change Lisa's poverty, but it gave her dignity and hope. She spent some Kairos to help somebody and what happened Lisa would go on to join our pantry team and ultimately become a board member friends Jesus paused but for a brief moment with a pitiful beggar and gained a disciple Susan paused and welcomed and we gained a valuable teammate imagine what could happen if each of us spent a little more quality time in ministry to the countless Bartimaeuses and Lisas that cross our paths every day. How many more could be rescued? How could our lives improve as a result? And maybe, just maybe, our way would become His way. It takes just a little quality time. Grace, peace, and good health always. And have a blessed day.